Welcome to this video coverage for round six of the round six. This is rather game six, yeah, of the world championship match between <coughs> defending champion Magnus Carlsen and Vishy Anand from India. Round six is a Carlsen white game, and we have an even score in the match, so Carlsen will definitely try to press with white. Let's see what happened today. E4 again. Yeah, it seems that Carlsen has decided to go e4 in this match. The third white game already where e4 was tried. We had one win against the Berlin. And then um, Anand switched to the Sicilian. And we see exactly the same moves again. 2e6. Yeah, in game um, 4, Anand now had played the move g3. One of the rather typical for him uh, non-theoretical lines that white has um, as its disposal it's not a bad line i have played this myself occasionally as a non-e4 player in uh, yeah I, I once in a while play e4 and then i play the sidelines those kind of uh, lines that have some some poison but uh, they're not totally the main lines but okay he didn't really get anything in game four. So in this game, it was time to play something serious. So we have d4, the open Sicilian. Okay. And Arnold is playing a6. Interesting. That was not a line that could be expected. If you look at Arnold's uh, career, he has played knight c6, the Tamanov, the early knight c6. He has played this really often find a ton of games but um, in this match it seems he has to or he has to prepare to play a6 the Khan variation yeah what is the big difference between those lines there are a number of differences but um, one important thing is that a6 here the Khan variation played in the game this allows white to play c4 the Maroxi bind setup with c4 and e4 pawns um, knight c6, on the other hand, the Tamanov, is basically preventing that. And the reason is that this variation here is very um, satisfactory for black. The difference to the game, and we see something similar in the game, is that black here has played the move knight c6 instead of a6, which is just much more useful to put pressure on the center. Um, it's easier to understand maybe if you see the game. This position here um, is already very uh, okay for black. In the game, after a6, Carlsen in fact played c4, a move that only recently has really come to the, um, to the forefront of theory. Um, to be honest, I always thought that this, this is uh, something that white should investigate, but um, it only recently has picked up due to one specific idea that to be honest, I also didn't know, but um, I always sort of had the feeling that c4 is a serious move. Yeah, knight f6, knight c3, and bishop b4 played by Arnold. If black is not playing bishop b4, the immediate pin, um, he might play queen c7. That's the main alternative. After that, white plays a3. This is strong. It prevents bishop b4. And uh, white will set up a typical kind of formation, bishop e3, bishop e2, castles, f3, this kind of Maroxi bind, rock solid in the center. And uh, black will set up um, a hedgehog against that. So what we probably will get is something like this. I can This can be played in a ton of uh, move orders like this, b6, something, something along, along those lines. And white is going to play b4. That's an important point why a3 is quite useful. Very often white will play b4 later anyway. Yeah, and this position type is um, uh, nowadays considered to be a little bit better for white due to the space. But okay, it's the headshock. And uh, black has um, always has some, some counterplay available. It's uh, very much um, a playable line. But not something that, uh, that Anand really um, plays that often, the headshock formation. So it's no uh, surprise that he played differently. If we go back after c4, knight f6, knight c3, he went with bishop b4, this pin. Yeah, um, this is a different situation now than with the knight on c6. 
Of course, black is attacking this, but white has additional options. One option compared to um, the, the position with the knight being on c6 is the move e5, not played by Carlsen. Um, after that, there are funny lines with queen a5, really, really sharp stuff. But um, okay, this is not so important for the game because Carlsen now played a very interesting move. It's a move that looks a little bit clumsy, but is in fact quite strong. He played queen d3. Yeah, in fact, it's really a strange move. Um, but it is quite good. Uh, why? Why is this? Yeah, well, white, white's queen is doing something very important. It keeps the pawn protected. And it has some very, very nasty ideas. If black plays the totally normal looking move, queen c7, then white can actually play a3, bishop takes, and queen takes. That's really interesting. Why is this possible? Yeah, knight takes e4, unfortunately, is answered by knight b5, and white is already winning here. It's really that bad. Something like pawn takes, queen takes, rook f8, bishop h6 is going to win the rook. Or let's say the exchange, white is a, a piece down. So this is a, a line that really wins for white. Yeah, means that queen c7 is not really a great idea for black. So what should he play? Hmm. It's difficult, actually. Um, if black immediately takes, then white takes with this, and he has this additional idea. That's also not very, very good. Um, yeah, when I was looking at, uh, at this uh, after the game, I noticed that um, an interesting way to play is maybe the move d6, which is a little bit more, let's say, this is a more complicated way to play compared to what Anand played. Anand's approach was very straightforward, um, but I'm not sure that I like it really, to be honest. He played the move knight c6, directly developing the knight. And uh, this, in fact, gives White an opportunity that was uh, gladly taken now by the world champion. Carlsen now took on c6, d takes, yeah, b takes c is really not leading anywhere. a3 now is a really a big problem because black here can cannot even take because of queen g7 with an excellent position for white. Yeah, so you have you basically have to take with the d-pawn. And then, of course, Carlsen just traded queens and played e5. Yeah, it seems that all this was prepared by Arnold. He was playing this really quickly, and also the next couple of moves, they were put on the board rather, yeah, at, at a quick speed. Um, yeah, he has an interesting moment after e5. What should black do? He played knight to d7, which is technically a novelty, but um, it is a very natural move. In fact, it um, it is clearly the case that the move knight e4, I believe, is not that great. It's a possible move, but not that great. White will play a3 here. That's important. Not a lame move like bishop d2. a3 is better. Bishop takes pawn takes. Yeah, and now we have a situation where um, we have um, a, a quite similar situation to the game, actually. The difference is that the knight now is on e4, where it is much less stable. And uh, in fact, um, there are very, yeah, I mean, there are little, um, little, there's little space for the knight to go to. Um, yeah, okay, theoretically speaking, c3 is hanging, but this is really not a pawn <laughs> you, you can take. The knight is uh, close to being trapped or being trapped really quickly. Um, I think this is really not um, so good. If you compare it to the game, in the game we had a similar situation. After knight d7 played by Arnold, bishop f4, this is really the only move. F4 is not a good idea because you kill your own bishop. Yeah, it looks at your pawn now. Bishop is four is much better using the pieces, not this move. Bishop F4. And now Arnand took on C3. So we have a very much comparable position to what we've seen before. Only now the knight is on D7. And it's much, much safer on D7. So. This is uh, certainly better in comparison. However, what about this position? Black now played king to c7, 
h4. This is uh, one of those moves that are pretty clear to a strong player, but maybe not so much to a less experienced player. Why h4? Yeah, h4 is the strongest move here because you need and want your rook developed quickly. You get your rook to h3 and then possibly over here, well, h3 or h4, in fact, after the pawn is pushed to h5. So you develop your rook right on the initial square. And what's very important, this pawn here on h4, it's gaining lots of space on the king side. What white wants to do is he wants to pressurize black's king side with his pieces. And this is done very nicely by Carlsen. Anna now played b6. Yeah, the alternative here was h5, stopping the rook. But this has one very important drawback. It makes this bishop, yeah, it gives this bishop really an excellent position on f4. It cannot ever be attacked by g5 or whatever. And white really has a simple plan. Yeah, going to attack the, the, um, the, the king side here. Also bishop d3 coming, long castles coming. So there's lots of pressure here and it will be difficult for black to uh, to defend. It was really a, a matter of um, yeah choosing between uh, two two evils. Yeah, In the game, what Arnold did, he didn't play this, but he played b6 instead, b6. And after that, h5 was played. Yeah, now again, a typical situation. Black absolutely cannot allow h6 which would force g6 and, and then he's totally dead on the dark squares. Yeah, So he does not want to have this f7, e6, g6 formation. h6 is basically what you what you must do here. Um, yeah, and now after h6, white castle long. To be honest, this position is, um, is a very logical uh, consequence of the opening choice by, by Arnand. I think when he played the Khan variation, the variation with c4 and, and, and this, this queen d3 could have been easily anticipated as one of the one of the fashionable lines there. And it seems that uh, Arnand and his team really uh, went for this position quite willingly. Um, and to be honest, I'd like to question this, um, this decision and due to two, two reasons. First of all, I think that uh, this is simply not really good. <laughs> Isn't white just better here? I mean, look at this. The next moves are very logical and very hard to improve upon. Bishop b7, rook d3, c5, rook g3. Yeah? And just look at this. Isn't white just better here? Um, okay, he has this double pawn, but it's nothing that, that black can attack. It's not like an, an obvious weakness or anything. On the other hand, white has an excellent rook here on g3, always putting pressure on the king side and the g7 pawn. And white has additional ways to increase the pressure. He can put the bishop here, which looks all the way to h7. And white has those kind of ideas, rook h4, g4, even increasing the peace pressure on the pawn. I, still, I, I simply think that white is better here. And the second thing that is also uh, I think a bit questionable is to get this position exactly against Carlsen because this is just what he loves to do. This kind of position where you're just better, a little bit better even. Not uh, it, it doesn't need to be a fantastic advantage, but the kind of thing that you can press forever with little risk. So this is kind of, I think, a dream position for, for Carlsen. Um, I'm not really sure why they went for this um, willingly. It would have been interesting to uh, to know in the, in the in the press conference, but as we will see later, there were other things to talk about. Um, yeah, rook a to g8, that's logical. I need to defend the pawn. Bishop d3, knight f8, and bishop to e3 back. Yeah, this is a, um, a prophylactic move that is preparing to react to what exactly is happening now, black playing g6. Yeah, um, Anand really cannot stand to, to stay there passively all the time, so he decides to open up on the king side. If we imagine black doing nothing, white will probably really just do this and pick up this pawn. So you have to do something. g6, Carlsen captured. 
knight takes g6 and rook h5. This is a strong move, not difficult to, to play and see, but still strong, covering e5 from the side. If you just take this pawn, it uh, it won't help you because black has this funny funny counter blow with knight takes d3, check being threatened. This uh, saves black. So rook h5 is much stronger. Bishop to c6. Yeah, this is a kind of a sit and wait strategy, but black really um, cannot do much more. Yeah, and here I think we, we come to a situation where it's not totally clear cut how white is going to increase his advantage. It looks like this pawn here on h6 is a goner, but there's always e5 under pressure as well. And you cannot really easily play, let's say, f4 as white, covering e5, because this will also, a pawn on f4 will also block your own bishop. So it is uh, not so easy to see a way forward here. It is absolutely clear that white is better, and maybe even, yeah, substantially better. But it's not easy to really yeah, do something that, uh, that amounts to something decisive. Very difficult. Carlsen decided to shuffle a bit. Played bishop c2. King b7. Rook g4. a5. Bishop d1. Yeah, bishop d1. This is covering this rook. Uh, so this is uh, sometimes helpful in capturing this pawn. But black can really just uh, just shuffle himself. It's never really an idea to take the pawn. Bishop c2. We are now white is threatening to take on g6 twice. Rook back. Yeah, and now we come to the absolutely uh, key position of this game and the decisive, really the decisive position in, in a way. Um, yeah, as mentioned, white definitely is better, but how exactly are you going to uh, make any progress? Carlsen now played the move king to d2. This is a move that has some logic, of course. What white wants to do, he wants to get the king over so that maybe the king is helping with the defense of those pawns. So that maybe like king, king to e2, f3, king f2, and then maybe you can take on h6 after you're totally safe with the counterplay. However, this move, king d2, it has um, a very substantial problem. If you want to treat this position as a small tactical exercise, have a look at this for black, black to play. Yeah, in fact, it is, um, I think, not so difficult to spot if you know that there is something, as I now told you, uh, oh, that was a loud sound, um, and as I, as I told you, because black now really can, I guess, win the game with the tactical stroke, knight takes e5. <laughs> yeah, but the, the funny thing is that, or the sad thing, however you, um, yeah, whatever way you may, may look at it, is that uh, Anna didn't play it. This was a mutual blunder. He didn't take this chance. Yeah, knight e5, what's so strong about the move? The big point is that, after rook g8, black has knight takes c4 check, and after king d3 again a check. Yeah, so a very funny tactical motif that secures black the win of two pawns. Here black is two pawns up. Um, white will very likely win one pawn back, the h6 pawn, but still, this is a fantastic position for black that he will probably win. If we look at something like this, like g3, keeping the g2 pawn, check, and maybe something like that, which is fantastic for black. Yeah, the a2 is hanging, so probably has to save it, like this maybe, and um, yeah, I can do something like that, and maybe bishop e4 later. It's a fantastic position. You have many ways to try to convert your pawns. At the moment it's uh, it's two pawns even, but you will lose one back as mentioned. Um, yeah, this was a fantastic chance for Arnand. And uh, it was one of those cases, Carlsen played king d2 and he immediately recognized that there was something off. And 
It, I was told that um, it was visible in his face, but Anna didn't pick it up. It's sometimes a very tricky business, this kind of poker face situations when you have made a, a bad a bad move, you very often see it right after you put it on the board. And um, it's it's good to have a poker face, but very tough to do. But it seems Arnold maybe didn't really didn't look at cards. And sometimes it's maybe also a matter of um, of luck a bit. If 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 your if your opponent's face is clearly giving away that there's something wrong, it's uh, it's maybe a matter of luck if you look at it exactly at this specific moment or not. Normally you just look at the board. It, um, it it depends on the player. Some players are more are looking at their opponents more, and so, some people are doing this uh, rather rather rarely. I belong to this category. I, I really only look at the board. I, I sometimes have played a game against someone and and afterwards um, really quickly forgot how he looked like because I was just looking at the board all the time. Yeah, King D two, a big blunder, but Vichy didn't uh, use it. He played. After about a minute, he played a4. a4, yeah. It is not a bad idea in itself. He wants to go a3 and maybe bishop a4 after preparation. But, um, of course, knight takes e5 was a huge, a huge opportunity. If, uh, By the way, if Carlsen is avoiding king d2 and plays something else, yeah, let's, let's say rook g3, some, some conservative move. Then, as mentioned, white is better and maybe even somewhat clearly better. But how to exactly win is another matter. It would have been um, a huge, uh, huge task, Gadafin. But of course, he. Um, this is a position that he uh, is playing very well normally. And uh, well, King D two is uh, really a rare exception of a of a blunder in a good position by Carlsen. Okay, a4 was played and uh, now Magnus quickly played king e2. Yeah, getting the king out of this out of this business. Yeah, and by now Anand, it seems, had to recognize that he had a huge chance. Um, yeah, and I think it, it really affected his play. White is definitely much better, especially now as he has managed this transfer to e2 without really being allowed this transfer. Yeah, it was tactically, it was a tactical mine that he stepped on with king d2, but well, it wasn't exploited. And now white really has gained. The idea is really this f3, king f2 possibly. Yeah, a3, f3. Yeah, and with this, all those um, uh, moves that secure the position, it gets more and more likely that this pawn on h6 will drop. Anand played rook d8, king to e1, rook d7, bishop c1, attacking the a3 pawn, rook a8, and back to e2. Those kind of maneuvers, they, they don't do very much, but they gain a little bit of time, and it's not a bad thing to sometimes just repeat the position. It's no, uh, no problem at all. Okay, Anand now played bishop to a, uh, to a4. Yeah, that's that's probably probably not helping very much, but it's it's difficult to give him any any great advice. This check, bishop c6, and now white can take on g6 and is now he's won this pawn and all this is hanging. Yeah, this wasn't really helping this bishop a4, but what exactly are you playing instead? As mentioned, it's very difficult to give him any advice, as now h6 is really um, a tremendous weakness. This king transfer to uh, to e2 has uh, helped White a lot. Yeah, he he probably could have defended better. Maybe maybe knight e7 here, yeah, something like that. I think this was mentioned in the press conference, putting trying to put the knight here. But um, I mean, while definitely this is tougher than. Uh, then the move that he played, the bishop a4 move, it is not something that um, is very likely uh, enough to hold the game. We look at something like rook g7, for example. I mean, yeah, rook g7. What exactly is black's move now? White is in total control and he will win material. Yeah, okay. In the game, this um, bishop a4 wasn't helping. Let's go back. Bishop a4, 
check bishop back and now white took that twice yeah and here white is already winning e6 hangs and uh, and h6 is, is lost what he was trying i mean anand uh, is uh, some counterplay here with with uh, with bishop d1 or rook d1 but it's really nothing serious rook d1 was played and white can really just take here there is nothing uh, nothing dangerous happening rook a1 king e3 here and now this rook e7 check and uh, after that move um, anand resigned yeah there is really no way to save himself if he goes here this rook h6 okay two bishop c5 and everything is falling apart yeah so a win for carlsen and uh, what i mean basically it's it's not mattering uh, how the result of the overall matches this will be the key game probably because it was a win for Carlsen out of a position where at one point, if we jump back with the uh, knight takes d e5 here, where Arnold could have gotten probably a winning advantage. And the difference is so substantial. Instead of a Carlsen lead with one point, Arnold would have led the match. And uh, yeah, the difference is so, so big. Um, a very, very huge blow to Arnold's chances in this match. He's down one point now. And uh, well, out of out of this position. To be honest, um, I watched the press conference, at least parts of it, and uh, I was really um, surprised and um, yeah, it's really admirable how uh, composed Arnold was after this game. I mean, the kind of uh, the kind of game where you really don't want to talk to anybody, and um, he managed to to do a pretty decent press conference. Uh, some of those um, some of those questions are. Yeah, a little bit borderline. Um, I mean, they were well, they were pretty okay this time, but there were cases where well, Anand really last time, especially in Chennai, when he had played a terrible um, end game and lost uh, a game where he really uh, was totally uh, angry with himself. And then people repeatedly asked in the press conference, "How do you feel? How do you feel?" Yeah, and this is kind of the most stupid uh, stupid question ever. <laughs> because well how do you feel terrible of course uh, yeah I mean I don't really know some some of those questions are really weird because uh, I mean even in in other sports those questions are not asked if you let's say uh, you, you lose a terrible game of chess and you get asked how do you feel I mean this is like um, if you you remember the the the, the, the semi-final of, of soccer this year where Brazil lost 7-1 to Germany in the semi-final. And if you lose 7-1 in a semi-final in your own country and then a reporter will ask one of the Brazil players, how do you feel? I mean, the only answer is just punch this guy in the face. So you don't ask this kind of question. You really you know that the guy is feeling terrible. You don't have to rub it in in a way. Yeah, so a very important result in this game. And um, pretty... Um, Pretty weird occurrence but it happens on the highest level one explanation by the way is that the situation here really was not very tactical Arnold was not searching for tactical tricks in a way but um, it's still surprising because the move knight e5 was in the position all the time and somehow it, it didn't occur to him it's uh, it's really uh, really um, surprising that he didn't that he didn't see it Okay, I hope you enjoyed the coverage of this game. I'll be back with, uh, I think, game 7 it is. And this will be played on Monday. That's a rest day on Sunday. Thanks for watching. Till then, bye.